Greetings everyone, welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic time working with creating different point symbols for your map. The point of this exercise isn't to turn you into fantastic uh, graphic artists, but I do want to give you a taste of some of the different kinds of things and different kinds of effects that you can achieve with Adobe Illustrator using some very basic vector art techniques. I love vector art, I love vector graphic design, so it's very natural for me to do vector cartography and vector graphic design. But let me give you an example of how to do a more advanced kind of point symbol uh, for uh, whatever it is you need on this map that requires some kind of shading, maybe some type of jewel-like point symbol. I can definitely think of uh, uh, situations where you might want to have some type of shaded gem or something as a point symbol on your map. So let me just show you how you would do something like that in Illustrator. I'm going to create a, a, a gem that's got uses an ellipse as a base. So here I go right there. I've just created a basic ellipse. That looks fine for what I'm trying to do. Let's create it, um, uh, let's create it red. So I'm going to use, I, I want to create, I, since I'm going to have this be shaded and also highlighted, I want to use sort of a, a medium red. Uh, again, I'm still not being too precise on my colors. But that, that looks like a, a pretty reasonable color for it. I just see I didn't have my ellipse highlighted, but that's okay. It saved this because this was the last color that I used. And now it's in the center there. I'm going to bump up the outside because we'll put this gem inside of a bezel. But I sort of think that we're going to do this in a sort of different way. So I've got this kind of gem look right here. I think actually that's exactly what I'm going to do for my gem here. I want to get rid of that outline, so I'm going to turn it to none, and then I want to copy it and paste it, and I'm going to make a slightly larger outline, transform, scale, maybe about 125% uniform scale, and then I'm going to make it something at the moment that uh, just approximates a gold color, sort of a medium gold color, that orange, and then oh, I need to bring my gem to the front, arrange, bring to front, and then I want to center that. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks like I can work with that. So I've got the gem in here, and then I've got this, what will be a golden uh, bezel around it. I'm going to turn back on the outline of the gem. I'm going to make it black. I'm going to make it 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to make it very thin. Uh, weight 1 point. That looks good. I want to put a 1 point line on the outside of the bezel as well. Now I want to sort of make this shaded and sort of make it look three-dimensional. So I need to uh, think about where the light is going to be hitting this gem. I'm going to have the light up here in this corner uh, and then shining down this way. So the light will be shining this way. So this part of the gem will be highlighted. This part of the gem will be shaded. Uh, it'll start to look three-dimensional. So how do I do that? Well, I really, I want to use the Pathfinder tool quite a bit to do this. First of all, let's work with this bezel that's inside. I'm going to zoom in so I can see what's going on here. I want to select the bezel and then say Control c or Command-C and then paste in front. So actually, let me show you what just happened right there, because ordinarily, you're probably expecting the Paste in Front tool to put that at the very front of everything. Let me redo the stroke here. Edit, redo stroke, redo, there we go. If I just select the bezel, and then I hit Command-C to copy, and then I deselect everything, and then I hit Command-F to paste in front, it pastes that copy in front of everything on the layer. So it is sitting on the topmost part of this particular layer and it covered up my gem. I'm going to undo that. What I did last time was I still had that back thing, back bezel selected when I hit Command F. 
Now it still pasted a new one there. It still pasted it right in front in its exact position, but it didn't go and paste it in front of everything. If you use the paste in front command when you have something selected, it will paste that object that's been copied right in front of exactly what was selected, not the entire layer. If nothing is selected, it pastes it in front of the entire layer. If just a particular object is selected, it pastes it just in front of that object. So in this case, I had the original bezel selected. I said paste in front. So it's still sitting behind the gem, but still sitting uh, directly in front of the original bezel. That's actually what I want right here because I'm going to select it and I'm going to move it down a little bit. Okay, see that gap? See that ring there? I'm really interested in coloring in that ring. All right. So what I'm going to need to do is select both the original bezel and I'm going to select the new one that I just moved down a little bit. And I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool I'm going to go ahead and move this over here so you can see both of them at the same time. And what kind of Pathfinder tool do I want to use? I want to use minus front. You can kind of see the emblem right there. I want to create a compound shape from, select, from subtracting the area in front. The area in front is what I've moved down. This is the area behind. Take a look what happens. I get just that crescent moon shape right there. That's exactly what I want because that's going to become a highlight. Now notice that I that it deleted the original bezel. I want to get that back. I kind of think of whenever I use the Pathfinder tool that it eats. I always think of it as eating. It eats all everything that was put into that particular operation. That's why it's always good to have the original shape on your clipboard so I can hit command F and get exactly that shape back sitting exactly where it was. Now it is sitting on top of everything, so I'm going to click on it and say arrange and send to back. Now I've got that little sliver sitting on top of the uh, bezel there. I'm going to take that bezel, or excuse me, that little sliver there that's on top of the bezel, and I'm going to make a copy of it, and I'm going to rotate it around. So it's the exact opposite of what it was and I'm going to align it here with the bezel. So now I've got two different colors on side that bezel. I've got two different crescent moon shapes on side that bezel. I want to make this the highlight so I'm going to take the stroke off and then I'm going to use a much much lighter shade of orange. Maybe that. Okay. And then this one I'm going to take off that stroke and I'm going to use a much darker shade of orange. Oh, see what's going on here? I'm beginning to get some shading here. I'm going to click on the bezel. I'm going to copy it and say paste in front. And whoop, I didn't want to have it selected that time. I actually wanted to paste in front of everything and then turn off the interior so that I've got that one point line still around everything. Oh, I'm beginning to get the three dimensional sort of effect that I want here in Illustrator. Now I'm going to do the same thing to create the uh, effect of this, this gem that's sitting inside. I want to go ahead and group everything though that is creating the bezel. I want to say group I can ver and it brought it to the front. I'm going to verify that everything is okay. Grouped it is. I'm going to arrange, bring that to front. And I'm going to make sure that everything is aligned again. Just like that. Now I want to put in the highlighting to this gem. I'm going to repeat that process. Control C or Command C, Command F and then slide this down like that. Do a minus front operation on the Pathfinder and make that a very light pink. And paste in the original gem. Arrange, bring to front. Ahead and stick that back in there. Copy that, that little crescent moon, moon shape. Crescent moon shape. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to make the 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to do, do the Pathfinder again to go minus front. Oh, I like the look of that. And then I'm going to use a much darker shade here. Much darker shade of red right there. Go Command F to paste in front. And then arrange. I can say send backward. I could use the keyboard control shortcut for this, and ordinarily I do. But if I say send back, it's just stepping back one. It's not sending it all the way to the back. It's just stepping behind the next thing that's right behind it. So that next thing was that little sliver. And then arrange send backward. Again, there we go. Now I want to make sure that I turn off that and that. And then I'm going to put back on my gem and then turn off the interior so that I've got just the little black line because I think that's important. Oh, and check that out. There's a little three-dimensional gem. I want to make sure I group all of that. Very easy if you know what to do. Very easy if you understand vector art and you can be able to put these sort of things together and you can use the Pathfinder to put together a neat little symbol like that. Uh, while I'm at it, and what you could do, I'm going to make it look a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and select the entire thing. It's all grouped together. And then I'm going to go to Effect and then go down here to Stylize and Drop Shadow. And for the heck of it, for now, I'll just accept all the defaults and say OK. Oh, and now take a look at that. Now I get this effect as if it's above, floating above my map a little bit. That's a really neat effect. That's going to become an incredible point symbol. Something else you could do, um, lots of times in maps, you need to have situations where you have things numbered. So what you could do is I go to my text over here, and I'm going to say 1. And let me bump it up so that it's much larger. 24 point. How is that looking? 48 point. Oh, that's looking much better. 48 point. And now I've got a 1 inside of my little point symbol right there. And uh, you can adjust that so that we end up being behind all of the different shading if it overlapped and make it really look like that 1 is down inside the gym. But that right there doesn't look bad. It would probably look better if it were actually inside that. Well, I'll leave you to play around with that. But there is an example of how you might do a point symbol. Maybe you go reference 1 in some different other part of the map to tell you what 1 is. Fit on screen. Oh, doesn't that look great? I really hope you enjoy this. I really hope you love vector art. So I'm going to let you go uh, with that. I'm going to let you create some fantastic symbols. Experiment with creating some basic symbols, uh, some more complex symbols, putting them all together, and creating the kind of symbols that you want for your map.